But when you're at Mount Sinai Hospital, it takes on an entirely different meaning. It takes on an entirely different essence. It's a difficult thing to have to pray for your life. It's even more difficult to have to pray for the life of a loved one. Nights are the worst when you're in a hospital. There's a certain intense quiet that evaporates all that exists. You feel an incredible pain that simply doesn't allow for you the opportunity to sleep or to get any rest, really, whatsoever. After a while, you start to learn the codes and you start to become aware of the people on your ward who will no longer be there with you the next morning who have made that transition. <coughs> yes, it's a difficult thing to pray for your life. And it's a difficult thing to have to pray for the lives of those who you truly love. We ask ourselves an eternal question. And what I love about being in this community and what I love about spending time with folks in this community is a writer once penned, why is it that heaven is too crowded with angels tonight? We ask ourselves the eternal question, why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why is it that there are some who come to know a greater hardship or a greater challenge or a greater difficulty than others can possibly imagine or even remotely comprehend? When you're in a hospital, the world goes on without you. Everything seems so distant. People, activities, life. All the things that you used to know and that you used to experience seem so far away. All those things that defined who you were as a person, your friends and your family, your employment, it seems so far removed. The most difficult thing is when you come to realize how much the world is moving on. You watch the news, you read the newspaper, you talk to people on the phone. You come to realize that the world is simply moving forward. But you're not. You're more isolated. In a hospital, time simply feels like forever. It feels like nothing ever moves. You realize how fast life is. And you realize what it's like to no longer be a part of it or play any role in it. Yes, so why is it that the streets of heaven are too crowded with angels? And why is it that there are some who come to know a greater hardship or greater struggle than others? And why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people. This is a story I always share because it comes to be so relevant. We were talking about what were the qualities that go into being a good judge. People said, if you want to be a good judge, it's all about your academics or your intellectualism. Your ability to research and to write and to publish. I remember responding by saying that none of those things really matter. When asked what qualities I felt went into being a good jurist, I responded by saying it is our life experiences. See, I've come to believe that Hashem gives us our experiences for a reason. He gives us our experiences for a purpose. What I've also come to realize is when you spend a lot of time in a hospital, the way I have, Hospitals take on their own life. They take on their own essence. They have their own energy. There's a unique universe that you can find within a hospital that exists nowhere else. And what you come to find 
is that ultimately, the experiences that we are given do not require us to always have to be happy. So often people will say, oh, life is about finding happiness. Life is about finding joy. Life is about smiling. And what Bikr Cholam teaches us when you have the opportunity to visit folks like me who were in a hospital for an extended period of time, is that as you go through your days, it's not always about happy. It's perfectly okay to be sad. It's perfectly okay to be frustrated. It's perfectly okay to be disappointed. It's perfectly okay to be angry. It's perfectly okay to voice your anger and frustration with Hashem. These are all things that are completely appropriate. These are all things that are real. These are all things that are part of being a human, that are part of being a person. We don't always have to be joyous. We don't always have to be happy all the time. But what you come to find when you participate with Beaker Holom, when you get involved with Beaker Holom, is that life is about finding a sense of mission, having a sense of purpose, having a sense of focus. When you're in a hospital, you crave the sense of normalcy. You crave those little things that go into life, that give it meaning, that give it purpose that go to what it is at its essence. It's those little things that you want and you desire more than anything else. And when you're in a hospital, it's a difficult place. People don't always enjoy coming to a hospital. They don't enjoy coming to the different wards, the different units. It's a hard thing for people to do. It reminds people of their own mortality. It reminds people of what could be their fate. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. It's intense. It's an incredible challenge to have to come and visit. So when a person's in a hospital, when they're in a trauma unit, people will come to visit in the beginning. They will come to pay their respects. But for the people that are there for a long time, the world starts turning. The earth keeps moving. Life starts to go on. And the most difficult thing for any long-term patient is that feeling that things are moving on without you. That you're not a part of anything anymore. That you're not contributing to anything anymore. That you're not relevant anymore. Life ultimately goes on. People move on. Things diverge. You crave your old life. You crave normalcy. And you crave anything that reminds you of it. Anything that is similar to it. Anything that connects you to the outside world and to the life that you once lived and to the life that you once knew. So often when people are sick or going through tremendous struggle, people will often talk about how much God loves you. They'll say that, oh, Hashem has such a love for you. And while that is absolutely true, it doesn't mean anything to somebody in a hospital. What means something to someone in a hospital is when you say to them that Hashem needs you. He needs your energy. He needs your spirit. He needs your enthusiasm. He needs your passion. He created you. And he needs you to fulfill your mission. And the only way that people feel needed is when people come to visit. When they inquire about how your day is going. When you're able to share stories with them. When they ask you for your advice or your consultation. When they ask you what should be done or what could we work on. When people come to visit you from the community and you're able to share experiences with them. You're able to tell them things that are important and they listen to you. 
The Yikar Cholom understands that concept of being needed, of being relevant, of ultimately having someone that cares about what you think, that cares about who you are, that cares about your past, that cares about what you can do, that cares about your contribution, that cares about you as a person. Yes, it's not about being loved. It's about that feeling of being needed, of being relevant, of still having a place in the community, of still being thought of, of still being respected. Being in a hospital, you lose every aspect of who you are. You lose every element of your life. Beaker Holm gets that. They understand that. They come trained. They knock on your door. They don't just walk into your room. They never sit on your bed because that's your space. That's your place. They know just what to say to you. They know what conversations are going to be helpful. They know what's going to be important. They know what matters. And you heard in the beginning of our discussion today that it's about two to five minutes, maybe seven, maybe 10, maybe 15, but they also know exactly what time parameters they should use. So often people come to a hospital and they feel that a visit should be measured by the length of the stay, not recognizing how hard that is on a person. But Beaker Holem knows just what the right amount of the visit should be. That right amount that allows for you to feel that love, that compassion, that empathy. Well, at the same time, they know when it's time to exit so that you're able to get the rest and work through the pain that you have to confront and ultimately have to contend with. So why is it that the streets of heaven are too crowded with angels? And why is it that Hashem allows for bad things to happen to otherwise such good people? Bigger Holom gives you that sense of life at its essence, at its core, at its very nature. Beaker Holm understands. The people that visit understand. The most important thing that a person should know when you come to visit someone in a hospital or in a home or by themselves. So often, people will say to those who are grieving, or they will say to those who are struggling, well, they will say to those who are in pain, everything's going to be okay. Well, they will say, I am sure that you are going to make a complete recovery. Or when the loss is great, they will say, I hope that you're able to find a sense of closure. These are words that Beaker Holom would never use. These are talking points that Beaker Holom would never provide. Beaker Holom understands when they come to visit, when they come to spend time, that for most people, you're not going to recover. And that closure is a word that should never be used. It should be stripped from all discussions within a hospital. What I learned from my visits with Beaker Holm was something fundamental. I learned through the volunteers, through the rabbis, through all the various people that came, sometimes life isn't about being able to recover. It's about finding a way to adapt. Adapting to your new life. Adapting to your new circumstance. Adapting to your new world. 
The power is not always in recovery. The power is in the ability to adapt to a life that you didn't want, but to a life that you are ultimately now going to have to live. So why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why is it that there are some who come to know a greater struggle or a greater hardship or a greater difficulty than others? And why is it that Hashem allows for the streets of heaven to be far too crowded with angels tonight? Life can change at an instant. It can change without warning. It can change without notice. And it can change without hesitation. Now, I have been blessed in my life. I've had the opportunity of completing 24 marathons. I've had the opportunity of completing a full Ironman competition. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Ironman, it is a 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike to be completed by a 26.2 mile run. The rules of the competition are quite simple. If you stop, if you rest, if you take a break, you run the risk of missing a cutoff. If you miss a cutoff, you will be immediately disqualified from the competition. If you finish at 12.05 instead of 12 o'clock, it is like you were never even there. Two years of effort, work, and training will literally be for nothing. Yes, we love Shabbos. But you know what? When you're in Mount Sinai, Shabbos takes on a different meaning. I want you to picture, if you would, the feeling you would have as you dive into a frigid body of water. The water temperature that morning of Lake Coeur d'Alene was 55 degrees. Imagine swimming in total darkness, not having any idea where you're going or where you are getting kicked in the face by all the other swimmers, and being blind, unable to brace for the ensuing impact. Trying to surface, but you can't because there's other swimmers above you. And lastly, the rope that connects you to your guide becomes entangled and ensnared with other competitors, so ultimately, it becomes constrictive. And as the rope constricts, it starts taking you below the surface. And as you go below the surface, you can't get oxygen. And as you can't get oxygen, you start to drown. When you spend time in a hospital, when you spend time in a nursing home, when you spend time with someone who is sick, when you spend time with someone who is challenged, when you spend time with someone who is infirmed, you come to realize something significant. You come to find that that gives you the connection to Hashem that we all look for. That allows for you to understand and relate to who Hashem is, to how He works, to what He does. Because you come to find that that's when miracles happen. When you feel that drowning sensation, you feel that sense of hopelessness, you feel that sense of fear. That's when you come to find that that's when miracles occur because that's when you come to find that ultimately, if given the opportunity, the body can disconnect from the soul. And once that disconnection happens, you realize that it's always the infirmed. It is always the mortal. It is always those who are in pain. It is always those who know struggle. It is always those people whose spirits and whose souls have a resilience, have a strength, have a power, have a purpose, have a mission, have an essence that allows for them to pierce the heavens. So why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why is it that the streets of heaven are far too crowded with angels? Life can change in an instant. And it can change in an instant for all of us. It was a beautiful day in New York Central Park. Now I've memorized the loop that serves as a circumference of the park so I'm able to walk unescorted, independently, without a guide. As I walked in the pedestrian lane, in an area that you all know well, 
and you get to the bottom of the hill at 91st Street, a bicyclist was traveling at a speed of an excess of 35 miles an hour. And due to such a high rate of speed, he was unable to maintain control of his bike. And in doing so, veered into the pedestrian lane where I was walking and struck me directly in the back. At this point in life, I was in perfect condition. I had used athletics to cope with my blindness. I had used athletics to find my strength, to find my purpose, to know my mission, to realize my potential. But a 35 mile an hour impact is catastrophic. This required over 10 weeks of hospitalization at New York's Mount Sinai Hospital. See, Beaker Holum came the first day. The first day, when you're a trauma patient, Beaker Holum was there. See, Beaker Holum plays a significant role in every aspect of a person's life when they're in a hospital. Yes, the world seems so far away. Your life seems so distant. Life is never about big things. It is only about the little. A person like myself, 17 marathons, a full Ironman, could do nothing for himself. You're angry and sad at the same time. You feel a sense of hopelessness. You miss being a part of things. You miss what it's like to have a Shabbos meal. You miss what it's like to go to a restaurant. You miss what it's like to go to your job. You miss what it's like to ride on a bus. You miss what it's like to go in a taxi. You miss what it's like to feel fresh air. But what you miss the absolute most is human connection. You miss people. You miss socializing. You miss touch. You miss companionship. You feel like you're just left out. You feel like you're forgotten. You feel like you're incidental. You feel like you don't matter. You feel like everything is going to simply move on without you. It's never about the big things. It is only about the little. You miss what it's like to use the bathroom. You miss how it feels to take a hot shower. You miss that feeling you have to sleep the night without having to arrive at an indescribable level of pain. You crave those small things in life. You crave people. You crave someone asking you how you're doing. You crave somebody bringing you food. You crave warmth energy in life. Oh yes, we love Shabbos, but at Mount Sinai Hospital, Shabbos takes on a whole different thing. Because Shabbos is when Beaker Holum comes. It's when the hallways are packed with people. It's when the nurses are overwhelmed. When the synagogues let out. And young and old alike besiege the hospital. Up and down the staircases. All throughout the wards. You hear life. You see joy. You feel that energy and that excitement. Time stands still in a hospital. There's nothing to do but to feel your pain. 
and to wallow in the sorrow that comes with what is going to be your predicament, what is going to be your future, what is going to be your prognosis, what is going to be your life. But on Shabbos, Beaker Holom arrives, and they come with the cavalry, and they turn Shabbos into a joyous event. They love coming. They love visiting. And they just have this exciting energy that reminds you of why your recovery is important. They connect you to the outside world and they allow for you to begin working on your rehab, to start facing your pain, and to take on your recovery. They remind you what life is about. They remind you why you have to get back into the world. They remind you that the life that you once had is waiting for you. And they remind you that you have never been forgotten. That the community always remembers and that you are still embraced. But most importantly, they remind you that you are not just loved, but that most importantly, that you are desperately needed. They give you that connection to the world. They allow for you to experience the outside. And they give you that strength, that sense of purpose, that sense of mission, that sense of energy, that sense of enthusiasm, that sense of excitement that allows for you to adapt. To adapt to the new reality of life. But you know that with Beaker Holum, you know with the volunteers, you know with these folks that they're going to help you through that process. That they're going to allow for you to make a transition and they are going to allow for you to basically try to give back as much of the life that you had as is humanly and as physically possible. Oh yes. Why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why is it that there are some who come to know a greater struggle or greater hardship than others? 24 marathons I've now done and a full Ironman. But what was the most difficult? The most difficult thing was trying to get to the nurse's station at the end of my ward. What makes Speaker Holm so important is they understand this. That there's more effort and more energy that goes into doing simple rehab or simple physical therapy as it does to complete a full Ironman competition. You need that support. You need that strength. You need that teamwork. You need that companionship in order to allow for you to move forward. And what Beaker Holup does is they allow for you to celebrate every victory. No matter how small or incidental you think it is, they allow for you to find mission, purpose, and focus in it. And in my situation, we were able to take those steps. And it was a short time ago, and it was time for the New York City Marathon. Now, running through the streets of New York with a crushed hip and shattered pelvis was going to be difficult, to say the least. And Beaker Holm understands that. That when you're making a transition, pain always stays with you. It never goes away. It is always there. Because we ran to the streets of New York and crossed the 59th Street Bridge and began running up First Avenue. The pain was becoming so severe that I remember praying to the heavens to allow for me to finish. And at that point, through Beaker Holon, through transition, through life, through hardship, through difficulty, through pain, through suffering, you come to find what that we all seek. You come to find your level of peace. Peace with your new life, your new purpose, your new circumstance, but most importantly, peace with Hashem. So why is it that bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why is it that there are some who know a greater struggle? The answer goes like this. At a certain point in your life, you come to realize you can't spend your time, your energy, and your effort focusing on how you're going to get over it. For you come to realize with the support of your friends, your family, your community, and Beaker Holm that it's time to just get on with it. 
For ultimately, it is those who struggle and know pain and deal with hardship that will do what is hard and achieve no less than what is truly great. For we come to live our lives like we're part of a great novel. There will always be chapters of pain, setback, and frustration. It's only through those chapters you will come to find hope, joy, and triumph. It was deep into the night as the angel came upon Jacob. And there existed a tremendous battle. And the battle raged until the dawn. And when the sun rose, the angel gave Jacob a new name. The name of Israel. Which is translated to mean one who struggles with Hashem. But Jacob was not left uninjured. Jacob had a crushed hip. He would walk with a limp and know tremendous pain for the remainder of his days. I believe the scripture is interpreted this way. This accident happened for a purpose and for a reason. It was only through Jacob's pain and his setback that he was able to understand, empathize, and connect. It was only through these skills that he could become a leader and the father of a nation. In my own personal situation, if I hadn't had these experiences, I don't think I'd be as good a judge. I wouldn't be as kind, I wouldn't be as merciful, I wouldn't be as understanding. We're given our experiences for a reason and for a purpose. And by spending time with Beaker Holum, you come to learn life at its essence, at its core, and you come to know perspective. Let us leave here tonight celebrating who we are, celebrating the journey that we're on, celebrating the experiences that we have, for good and for bad. But let us use Beaker Holum, let us use its wisdom, let us use its guidance, let us use the pain to have an impact and an effect on those who live around us. Let us celebrate who we are and the journey that we're a part of. But most importantly, with the power and with the grace of Hashem, let us celebrate the notion that yes, many of us are mortal and even many more are infirmed. But it is our spirits and it is our souls that if given the opportunity, truly know no bounds. And with that, on this special night, at this most special place, let us come together and say, Amen. Thank you so much for your inspirational words. Um, and thanks again all for coming. We have dessert still. We have the gelato cart. Here are the raffle prizes. We're going to draw the raffle in about 10-15 minutes. Um, if you have your name and phone number, you don't need to be present to win. But we have jewelry that's here and the watches. We have a $50 gift certificate from Sylvia's, a $50 gift card from Grand Cafe, $50 gift card to Soho Asian Bar, $50 gift card to Soho Kosher Deli, $54 gift certificate from Levy's, a $100 gift certificate from Kush, a makeup session, a teeth whitening session, a potato kugel from Heidi, the kugel lady. Joey G has a photography session. Sal Hannah Salama has a facial and Zombeck Orthodontics has a Sonicare toothbrush. So if you want to buy raffle tickets, we're going to be walking around or there's a table here. Also, uh, Faye lost an earring and she found it, okay. And if you only got one raffle ticket, but you are two people, Please come get another raffle ticket and um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.